So what are they? The key thing about mixed models is you can allow for different sources of random variation in the data. So for example, something I see quite a lot in experiments is people have biological replicates and then within each of these they have several technical replicates. You might argue that you should be looking at random variation between the biological replicates as your kind of main source of variation, but of course there's variation within those replicates as well. Um, you might have an experiment where you've got, um, you're looking at measuring farm animals and you've got different farms, so there's variability between the farms as well that you might want to consider to be random variation. Another thing it's very straightforward to do, you can to a certain extent with ordinary testing, but it's very easy to sort of allow different groups to have different um, amounts of variability. So for example, if you were comparing two groups of mice, wild types and mutants, you could allow them to have different amounts of variability and quite often that happens in practice. I mean, repeated measures studies where things are measured repeatedly on the same animals or cells or whatever, you can take into account the correlation structure of the data. And I'll be saying more about repeated measurement studies in a few weeks' time, but um, that's another key thing about uh, mixed models. You can allow for patterns of correlation. So, for example, if you had a repeated measures study, you might imagine the measurements might be more highly correlated if they were closer together in time than those further apart and you might want to allow for that in the analysis and you could do in a mixed model. So just to sort of put in a very simple way how the models are defined, if you've used things like regression or analysis of variance, you could kind of define the model like this, where you've got one outcome measurement, which is the thing you're interested in analysing, and you would write an equation. This is in a very sort of shorthand format, I haven't given all the sort of parameters in the equation, but you'd have something called an intercept, which is a constant value, a series of things that you're fitting in the model, and I'm calling them fixed effects here to differentiate them from random effects, which we'll use in mixed models. So things like your treatment effect, time, anything that you want to fit in the model could be defined as a fixed effect. And then you have an error term. And in these models, you would consider or assume that the error had a normal distribution. That's your assumption. You've got continuous data, and it's not the data itself that's assumed to be normal. It's the error, the errors or the residuals, and that's the assumption you make. So if we extend that to mixed models, the big difference is we can also include effects as random. So they're assumed to have random variation. So not only the error term has random variation, but each of the random effects fitted has got random variation. So that's quite a different assumption and it does make a difference to the sort of results and the modelling process. You'll notice that I've defined the error as MVN here, that's multivariate normal, and that's to allow for the fact we can optionally, as well as say that the errors have got a normal distribution, we can say they've got a multivariate normal distribution and they're correlated as well. Often we don't do that, but in some situations um, that might be useful. So that's basically what the mixed model looks like, and um, we make these assumptions about the random effects and the error terms. Yeah, one thing I just wanted to note that um, in common with general linear models, mixed models has the same sort of idea that you're analysing one thing, you've got one outcome and you want to see which effects are having an impact on it and that's just the same in a mixed model. And of course there's other types of model where you might have more than one outcome or be trying to do I don't know, things like cluster analysis or principal component analysis, and they, they've got a different aim. But here we've got one thing we're trying to analyse using a model.